and welcome to this new After Effects tutorial by Flow Motion. And today I am going to show you how you can ride this train without spending any money on a train ticket. So let's directly get, get started here in After Effects. I have already created a new project, saved it and imported some files. And as I said in the intro, this is going to be a really cheap production. So everything you saw and you will see was recorded with a smartphone. So I have different green screen clips that I have filmed with me sitting in front of a green screen that I just hang up over a door here. And on my first test I saw that the blue jeans is getting close color wise to the green screen so I recorded another one with me in a black dress but I ended up using the blue screen anyways which just was a little bit harder to keep. Then I have the plates I've shot which is this day plate here and I have another one which is also pretty nice and I've just filmed it with my smartphone. All you have to do is sit in the train and really bring your smartphone as close to the window as you can and push a little bit against it so in this way it also holds its position and that's really all you have to do. Just be aware that you don't have that bright spots in the background because they could reflect in the window but that's really all you have to do to create those nice driving plates. So I also have the train ride at night. And as a last step, I have filmed once again with my smartphone the inside of the train. Here you can see me filming it and I'm going to take that as just a still frame for the train. And I have also recorded me driving. And I tried to keep my hands pretty loose so I didn't try to stabilize the shot. But I want to have all the motion in it that would be in there when you actually sit in a train and film it. Because later on I'm going to use that for the tracking. And then I will apply those movements to the whole shot. We can just do a right click and say new comp from selection. And hit OK. I'm going to like a half res here because we are in 4K. So I can just skip a little faster through all of this. Maybe even go to quarter resolution. And I'm just looking for a nice image, maybe at the 10 second mark. Now I'm just making a freeze frame out of it by selecting it, clicking with the right mouse button, time, freeze frame. And if I scrub through this, you can see that it's not moving anymore. Perfect, this is exactly what we want. So now we can pre-compose this by selecting it, layer, pre-compose, and we want to move all attributes into the composition. So we hit OK. And this created a composition for us and when I'm double clicking on it I have the original footage in there with the keyframes. So on the train BG let's just cut out all the windows. For that let's go to full resolution and start with that side here. If you click and hold down the left mouse button you can create curves. And when you hold down the spacebar, you can move the point. And then we go to subtract. And when we click on that toggle transparency grid button, where there's transparency, you can now see the checkerboard, which makes it a bit more easy to understand. We can select all the masks and go to subtract and we can go back into our train main comp and let's just call it our train main. Let's also make this 1920 by 1080 and it doesn't need to be that long, maybe just 10 seconds and hit OK. To get it to the right proportions you can just click Control alt f for fit and it will fit into your composition. should have scaled it down 50%. You can check the scaling by hitting S. There we have it. And while we're at it, let's just make it a little bit bigger, maybe like 55% because later on we want to apply some motion and in this case we don't see black borders. 
now we want to add a background plate so let's just take maybe this nice plate day 2 and drag it onto the new composition icon and in this case we have a new composition and when we want to start hit B for beginning and N for end then we can click on that time span and choose trim comp to work area now we have a composition that only holds our footage so in our train main we now want to bring in the plate day composition and now we can directly see that this doesn't match and here's a very important part when you want to bring different footage elements together so the perspective has to match so first th thing of course is that I filmed this train pretty horizontal because I knew that I have filmed the background at a 90 degrees angle because my camera was flat at the window so the only thing that's different now is the height of the different footages so now I need to find out where the horizon lies for both of the different shots and bring them on the exact same height and I'm done so how do we do that I normally create a new solid by hitting control Y color doesn't matter and call it vanish for a vanishing point disable it take the pen tool and now I can just look for straight lines in the image and they should all meet in one point at the horizon so let's go to full resolution and I'm clicking here and here and when I once click away I can now move it so I have a line that goes in the depth and if I do that for a few different points I will get my horizon here and let's do it a third time maybe on that line and just as a proof that all lines meet in the same point we can maybe go to those dotted line here and you see we have our horizon so by hitting control R we get some guidelines and I'll just drag it out here and we have our horizon of the train now let's do the same for our plate here maybe we just shrink it duplicate this one hit M delete the masks and start off you can see that this is pretty easy with that background and just as a proof I'm doing like two more of those lines okay and we see that our horizon is a little bit higher so what can we do with that we can simply click on our plate go to the pen behind tool and bring that point to the horizon now when we scale it everything scales from the horizon point same for the rotation and now of course we have to bring that horizon down to our horizon of our train and now we can enable the train back maybe work on the scaling and get rid of the guidelines you can just drag them to the side or to the top and what we have here a matching backplate maybe we want to rotate it a little bit so while we're at it let's directly color correct this as I was filming the train inside my camera made the auto color and auto brightness and auto levels to the inside and when I was filming only the outside everything was set to the outside but let's just have a look at the plate once again so once I move the camera away from the window and film the inside the colors and the brightness of the inside of the train will be what the camera is looking for and what it will auto level to so you see when I'm filming in the inside and now the inside is still too dark and the outside is bright but once the camera recognizes this the inside gets brighter and therefore the outside gets way overexposed so the sky is almost white and all the blacks aren't really black anymore so what we need to do to our background is bring up the highlights so that they are almost white and we need to wash out the blacks so that they are kind of grayish a quick thing we can do is just to set the in and out point right here 
and bring it into our edit. So now here we just have this image. I also freeze frame it so that I can make it over the exact time span. And this is just reference and preparation, but this is really, really interesting. So let's call this still ref bg, copy it and bring it into our main. Here we see it. So what we can do here is, of course, we can disable it, but you can also set this to be a guide layer and a guide layer won't be rendered in the rendering later on. So no matter if you by some accident leave the eye enabled, it will not render. And so here's my workflow. And I really hope that you learned something from this because this is a really interesting workflow and it's really, really help and powerful for many cases. And just in case you like all of those small tips and tricks, just feel free to subscribe to my channel so I can give you hundreds and hundreds of those tips and tricks. So now let's create a solid and pick our highlight color. And I just bring it to the side here and make the same again for our dark color. And you see, this is the black color of that bush here. But if you watch it just as a layer, it doesn't look that black anymore. Let's also make those guide layers. Now I have basically references for the colors for my background. So this should be like the darkest color of the bushes or the tree. And this should be the sky. So let's go to the background and apply a levels effect to it. Okay, first thing we do is we try to get some blacks out there. This is already looking good. You can always check it with the exposure here. The dark parts here should be white at the exact same point in time when this one gets white. So around here my blacks get white. So let's also work on that. Perfect. Back to normal. This is what this looks like. And now we try to get the same thing done for our sky. Now we have the same sky color. Maybe let's just push the plaques a bit back. So this is the grading of our background. And let's just quickly make one step to integrate this more. For that, we create a new adjustment layer by the control alt Y. Call this our glow because as our outside is so bright, it should bring light to the inside. So we type in glow at the effects and presets. And you can see what this is doing. So we can go to the threshold and bring it up. And this way, only the really bright areas get a glow effect applied. And now let's increase the glow radius to something really high. So you see now it's glowing over inside the train. But let's just bring this way up to maybe 500, maybe even 600. Great. Now this is obviously too strong, so you can just go down with the glow intensity or you could go down with the opacity of your layer. But I like to keep it simple and just go down with the glow intensity to maybe 0.2, maybe just 0.1. Maybe this is still too much, so maybe just 0.05. 400. So this just depends on how you would like to have it. But this looks really nice. Now the bright sky is really showing through. And as we have done that, let's apply a photo filter to our train. Because I filmed this by night, so it's a bit more cold. And I want to have it warm as the sun is burning pretty hot from the outside. And you can see the color change from more bluish tint to something more warm. Great. So let's just save this. So and for the moment, this is everything we want to do for the first tutorial. And if you liked what you see, just feel free to also watch the second part of this, where I'm bringing in the green screen footage. I show you some tips and tricks on how to position that. 
and then we're also going to track the original train movement and apply it to the whole shot for a final realistic look. And once again, if you liked what you see, if you get new ideas out of this, just give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and this way I can do way more tutorials for you and I really love this shit. So now I wish you a lot of fun on recreating this stuff and after that just follow me to part 2 of this tutorial.